Good morning. The binders that are here behind me are part of the work that's gone into preparing for the trial of Indy Mac versus Arise Davis, a trial currently pending here in Pinellas County, Florida. The trial features Indy Mac Bank suing my client, Arise Davis, an 84-year-old disabled woman, for foreclosure of her home here in Pinellas County. What's so critical about this case is the fact that IndyMac is a dead corporation and I assert does not have the capacity or authority to sue my client. Let's review some facts about IndyMac. They were one of the largest players in the subprime mortgage market, um, originating mortgages and loans all across the country. In July of 2008, uh, the bank failed and the FDIC stepped in and took over uh, the bank and the assets of the bank, including, including their mortgage operations. Uh, in March of 2009, a uh, sweetheart deal was inked between the FDIC, uh, IndyMac, and a group of Wall Street investors. Uh, these uh, fat cat Wall Street investors got a sweetheart deal where they picked up the assets of the then failed uh, IndyMac uh, thrift and mortgage operations. And uh, fairly shortly thereafter, they started reporting pretty hefty earnings um, on Wall Street and elsewhere. Again, the key thing to keep in mind is this was a sweetheart deal that benefited Fat Cat Wall Street insiders um, with the support of your and my tax dollars, and that's a key issue here. Um, another key issue, and this is represented in many of the depositions that are in these binders here, is the fact that across the country, IndyMac continues to pursue lawsuits in the name of IndyMac, despite the fact that corporate officers recognize in these depositions that IndyMac is a failed organization. Um, the agreements between IndyMac, FDIC, and their purchaser, OneWest, provided that the assets, including the mortgage notes and loans, were to be transferred over to OneWest. The agreement specifically provides that loans that are in pending litigation, and this is as of March 2009, uh, the name IndyMac, the party IndyMac, is supposed to be substituted out, and OneWest Bank, the new owner of these loans, is supposed to be substituted in. There are some very specific provisions in that contract um, that detail exactly how, number one, mortgages are to be assigned over to One West, and number two, notes are to be endorsed over. That's a key concept and something that will be talked about in the Taylor versus Deutsche Bank appeal that I'm arguing in the Fifth Circuit over in Volusia County next week. The fact that there are two documents in a mortgage foreclosure action, the mortgage and the note. The key issue here is that the mortgage is assigned, the note, according to the Uniform Commercial Code, is endorsed. Um, but that's a bit of an aside and a little bit of a, a taste of things to come in that Taylor appeal. But in this IndyMac case right here, the staggering thing to keep in mind is that IndyMac, and I assert, no longer has the capacity or authority to maintain lawsuits. Their corporate officers know it, and yet they continue to pursue these cases in the name of IndyMac. I want you to Google the name Erica Johnson Sec. I've included some of her depositions in here uh, where they get into some facts about that. Another key issue in these IndyMac cases, again, look at this deposition of Erica Johnson Sec. She asserts that um, while they know from the beginning um, that IndyMac does not own the, a note or a mortgage, uh, they are instructed by the investor in the note or mortgage to uh, put the IndyMac name as the plaintiff in the lawsuit because the investors don't want to be associated with the lawsuit or the uh, bad things presumably that come from being uh, part of a lawsuit. That's a key issue that we need to keep in mind, not just in IndyMac cases, but in all of these securitized loan cases. The fact that the plaintiff name on the case is not the real party that benefits from the mortgage foreclosure at the end of the day. If you look into the depositions here, you will read where um, Tom Ice from Ice Legal asks questions about who is the ultimate beneficiary of a mortgage foreclosure case. It's not IndyMac, it is the investors. And in this deposition, the, the, the witness, in fact, admits that. Um, I want to point out once again that Ice Legal over in West Palm Beach, Florida has done some of the best legal work in foreclosure cases across the country. The depositions that these folks have taken, Tom, Tom Ice and his staff of very aggressive, of very, very capable and qualified attorneys have done a phenomenal job in, in highlighting many of these issues. 
My point in posting blogs like this is to share the message and get the word out here about what's happening in these foreclosure cases and the improper activities that continue to occur. I hope that every one of you that are involved in foreclosure litigation, particularly when it's IndyMac cases, will use this information in your cases and begin to challenge very aggressively whether that plaintiff who's named in the lawsuit has the capacity or authority to continue with the litigation. Keep up the good fight. Please keep sharing information with me so that I can present it out here for the rest of the world to see and uh, help the benefit in their cases. Have a great week.